teaching your kids to listen is such an important skill. Because when your kids don't listen, it can make everything feel so hard. That's when the yelling happens. That's when the fighting happens. That's when everything feels like a battle. Yeah, you might have experienced this in your home. So I wanted to stop by and chat with you about two big ways that you can get listening to work better in your home. The very first one is more of a concept than a tool, so bear with me. I didn't name this video teaching kids to listen, not expecting kids to listen, because what I've seen over and over and over again is that parents have children who don't listen and then over and over and over again do the same thing, expecting that magically your kids are going to start listening. That's not how this works. Like every other behavioral skill, you have to teach your kids to listen rather than expect them to, which means you're going to have to do something different so that they learn how to be great listeners as opposed to it being something that you hope is going to magically happen. The second thing that I want to share is how to make that happen because that's really what you're looking for, right? The tool, the concrete thing to change in your home to make your kids magically listen. Now, it won't actually happen in the snap of a finger. It's gonna take you some repetition and consistency to put it in place. But one of the best ways to get your kids to listen and follow directions is to be careful with your language, to speak with purpose, to use your words deliberately. And that means that if you want your kids to follow directions, you need to give them directions. Not ask questions, not give them a choice, but actually give them a direction. I recommend that you actually do it in a very concrete action-based way so that it's something that you can see and know and all agree on if it was done or not. So that when you want your child to do something, it's not a, hey, come closer, and they take a half a step forward and technically they came closer. It was correct. You need to say, come stand right here, right here, and show them what you mean. When you want them to follow a direction, give them a direction, a clear, direct, this is what you are going to do type of direction. When you're asking them a question, ask them a question. Would you like to come over here? The power of the question is that they can say yes or no. And if they say no, that's a valid answer and you need to honor that. If they say yes, great, you're in business. So use questions intentionally. Now the third option you have is choices. You can give your child choices. What would you like for dinner? Mac and cheese, hamburgers, or hot dogs? But if they say, I want pizza, they can't have it because you only gave them three things. If you want to give it open-ended, say, what would you like for dinner? Let them pick whatever they want. If you give them choices, it's got to be one of those three that you gave them, or two that you gave them, or four that you gave them. Depending on your kid, I tend to go for less choices, but you do what's going to work for you. The final piece is that oftentimes parents get kerfuffled in the direction giving place because what your child counters with is logical. It makes sense. You, you don't care really whether it's hamburgers or mac and cheese or hot dogs. You're going to take the hamburgers or hot dogs out of the freezer. So if they want pizza, that's just as easy for you. So why not? The why not is because the long game is you want your kids to listen. And when you take their other suggestions when you say we're having hamburgers for dinner and they say no i want pizza and you say okay you've just taught your child to not listen when you say something specific and clear you've just taught them that they can argue you've taught them that they can debate you've taught them that they can question what you're asking for them and that means your child is not learning to listen now those are all great skills they're all important but make sure that you're the one in charge in your house, that you're the one giving the directions when it's a direction or deciding if it is a question or a choice where they can have some input. All are really important in your parenting, but they don't all lead to great listening if you're not careful in the way you speak to your children. So go put that in place. Let me know how it goes. I always love hearing success stories when people put my tools in place. And if you want to learn more, Come join me. I have a parenting group where we're going to be talking about this all week. Every week there's a new topic. So you never know what we're going to talk next because it's all action-based concrete tools that parents need. I will drop the link below in case you want to join me there. But if not, next week there'll be more tips 
on how to help your kids and your family be amazing in this wild and wacky time. I'll see you soon.